This is the perfect RIA, in case you didn't know. Bringing you all the strategies to help your business grow. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in while you feel the beat, yeah! Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Perfect RIA Podcast. I am your co-host, Matthew Jarvis, and with me, as usual, the man, the myth, the legend, Micah Shalansky. Micah, how are you, my friend? Jarvis, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Super excited to be jumping in and doing podcasts. Well, as the podcast has been coming out every single week, we had a little bit of a hiatus because we are going through surge, but absolutely excited to jump back into it. Yeah, we've talked about this before. You, know, you and I originally started the podcast Almost, and we, we joked often, probably too often, that it was cheaper than therapy. Now, that may or may not be true because we've Depends invested a therapist. lot in the podcast. Depends <laughs> on the therapist, I guess. But it really gives us a reason to um, get together every week. We do this every Monday morning. We record these and look at our practices. And one of the things that happens in this call every time when we get together is we do what we call text therapy. And we, we say, here's what I see to be a wall what am I missing? So here's where I feel like I'm limited. Here's where I think my staff is limited, my capacity, my income, my value, whatever it is. I feel like I'm seeing a wall. Help me see around this wall. And that is so big, right? Because we have one, a little bit of space, almost like with our clients, right? Clients, sometimes when they're running into something, they need that sounding board that's going to be yes. there, even though they can work to their own right conclusion. Us being there as the sounding board is really, really important, that impartial you know, point of view. And, and that's really what masterminds give. That's what this gives us here a little bit too. And so lest, lest you think that this is just us coming up with all of our own great ideas and we always think our stuff's amazing. No, we hash out a lot of stuff pre and post game and just say, okay, what works? What doesn't work? What if we did this? What if we tweak this? And we really need that you know, di self-diagnosis or team diagnosis to say, what other aspect are we missing? Sure, a lot of times we can work to our own right conclusion, but those few times that we're going down the wrong path. It is so great to have that text therapy. It's so great to have the podcast to say, hey, have we thought about this? And Jarvis, I'm going to pick on this one a little bit. Uh, and, you know, and I love it. You know, Kitsis does so many great things in the industry, so I'm not picking on, on Kitsis, but I, I am going to pull on this one little thread a little bit. And I'd actually just love to chat with him about this is he, he did come up with a capacity wall concept. And, and these are ones you got to be really, really careful of, because when you start hitting, quote, these capacity walls, a lot of times all I hear is is head trash. Yes. Yeah, yeah. these are uh, limiting beliefs, head trash, we like to call them, and, and they're incredibly dangerous. In fact, Mike, you and I had early on underestimated how dangerous, and this is a, a credit to your father, Floyd, who's a legendary advisor in his own right. He's been That's on the right. podcast several times. Uh, but you had an experience where somebody was, at, early on in your career, saying, hey, here's where the line is, and, and your dad just went full. I mean, he gave them both barrels. Oh he, oh, he did. So we're at a conference, we're at a conference breakfast, right? All the round tables are up and all these other things. And I still remember the the other advisor uh, was sitting there, I was talking to him and he's like, well, what are your goals and plan? And I was like, you know, Mike, a little junior advisor kind of thing. I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. And here's my plan. And here's this. And the other do, advisor- Do you remember? Do you remember what they were? Did you remember what you told him? I, I think I'm really was, curious. Yeah, I, I, I could be wrong, but looking back on the timeline, it was somewhere between probably 150 and 250 uh, is for like a GDC goal yeah, of, of where I wanted yeah. to be, right? And yeah. then be able to move up to the next level of probably 500,000, something of that level. That's probably what it was, but, sure. but I don't fully remember. So what I remember was chatting with him a little bit about it. And then my dad was a few seats over, but, but, but paying attention to this and also having another conversation. And then this other advisor leaned over to me and says, you know, my God, that's not how to do it because here's where you're going to hit your capacity and here's where you're going to hit your limits. And he starts to go on and my dad Jarvis slammed his hand down on the table, leaned over him and said, shut your mouth. Um, and I was like blown away. I was like, oh crap, what did I say? And he's looking at the spider. He said, don't you dare fill my son's head with all that bull crap. I don't want to hear it. He goes to say something. He's like, no, don't you say another damn word. He's like, he doesn't need your head trash. He doesn't need your limitations. He's going to do things and get this done. And he don't need you filling him with a bunch of false limitations just because you can't get things done in your office. <laughs> You know, and if you've ever been on the receiving end of my, my father, in, in a past life, he did some very interesting things. And so, you know, this is one of the things I don't really enjoy being on the receiving end of it. And it totally changed the conversation. Like four or five tables around us all went quiet. I mean, this was a very loud moment. And Jarvis, I really didn't appreciate at the mm -hmm. time what he was trying to do. I, I didn't understand it. And just like all times, like fathers and children, right? Sometimes a father is doing something and, and the child just doesn't understand, but it's for the greater good uh, of that child. And now I get to look back and I get to see the benefits of it. Because 
because really what was happening is this other advisor was giving me all of his head trash. He was feeding me with all of these limitations and those would have became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Those would have been my limitations. And, and my dad, Floyd, was so, again, so much gratitude for him, so oh, yeah. intentional about making sure I didn't have those. Sure, it came with other head trash, right? But that's not inevitable, <laughs> but at least trying to pick and choose those and to say it. And that's made a massive difference in our career in the value we get to drop and use with clients is because we don't have those same capacity limitations. But that's what we're still seeing in the industry, uh -huh. even 20 years later. Now, I want to actually oddly enough, argue in defense of this guy that was giving you this head trash that was trying to put this limitation. Yeah, I would it. be willing to, obviously, I was not there. I would, if, if we're just taking an average group of advisors, getting to 150, let's say your number was 200,000. There was probably not many people in that room that were doing more than 200,000 in GDC. There's probably a handful, right? The tippy top of the sure. tip top table, whatever they were calling it then. But in that room in general, that was probably more than almost anyone was making, let alone any young person. And I, I want to point that out because if we took like what the average advisor does. So uh, Michael Kitsis on his thing said, hey, once advisors get to 300 to 500, 300,000 to 500,000 of revenue, they hit a capacity wall and they can't get past it without hiring a junior advisor. That may be true for a lot of the industry. It is not, however, true for me. It was not true for you. It's not true for almost any of our Invictus members. And so you need to decide what version of the truth you want to follow. Ooh, if oh, you, oh, please, Michael, oh, please. Sorry, I gotta push back. No, no, I'm, jump so, in here, man. I'm so sick of this version of the truth. Bullcrap. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, there, there's, look, you can choose for this to be your own self-limiting belief. That doesn't mean it's the truth. Oh, great point. Right? Great point. Because Thank you. look at so many other advisors out there that, that are absolutely crushing this news. And sure, if one of them was doing it and nobody else was, fine. There's the one exception, but mm. there's so many other ones that are out there that are just crushing it. So this is your own self-limiting belief. This isn't true. That's a good point. That's a good you point. You are selling yourself short. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I mean, thank you. Uh, which mindset, right, you want to absorb. If you yes. want to embrace the mindset of there's a capacity wall at 300 to 500,000, then your entire world will shape around that. And you'll be sitting at a table at conferences whose names we won't say, saying that you're at capacity and you have 12 clients and $100,000 revenue, <laughs> right? Or you can say, I want to surround myself with people who have yet to find the capacity wall, who at a million, two million, three million, five million, seven million dollars of production still don't have junior advisors and they continue to grow. And they're they're not looking, even as they're having capacity issues, they're not viewing it as a wall. They're saying this is my opportunity to next level. So, okay, so here's, uh, again, a little bit of, of credit to Kitsis. Um, mm. One of the things that I think, and this is just a... Mm, maybe just went down the wrong rabbit hole, right? We do have different, when we hit different tiers at different sure. growth structures, this could be GDC, this could be uh, profitability, this could be clients, this could be team, right? All of these other things, you're gonna have to shift the way your business operates. Yes. I 100% agree. Now, that's not always the same line across the board, but it's going to be different. So you're gonna come to a certain point where what you have always done is not the best way to get you to the next level. I 100% agree with that. I would not call it a capacity capacity wall personally, uh, but that's just a place where the business needs to shift. I did not bring on a co-advisor, a junior advisor, but we told just recently, um, right? And so just a few years ago, I, I didn't have one. I was like, no, I'm just going to crush this thing and just knock it out of the park. And I was continually pivoting and refining how I was delivering value to my clients. So this wasn't, and this just so irritates me. Now I have fallen victim to this multiple times, by the way, um, is saying, well, if I just hired X, all mm -hmm. these problems would mm -hmm. go away. And it's not true, no. right? Uh, this whole 10 X versus better than two X or it's the who, not the how, right? Well, I so get that concept. I think a little bit of it could be misleading if you go down the path is saying, oh, if I just find this magical unicorn fairy person and hire them, all my problems will go away. Well, if you've ever hired somebody, you know that's not true. Right now, I love my team. I have a fantastic team. They do great. But it's because of the effort we put into the team is what we get the energy back out of them. And that's what we have to focus on here. So just because you hire someone doesn't mean those problems go away. You get a whole different basket of issues that you yes. need to deal with. And so you need to choose where are you at in your practice? What pivot, what shift do you need to have. Shifting is a great thing you need to do. It's not a capacity issue. Totally. And Mike, I want to draw out one of the things you said that it's different in every practice. This is where I hate, just loathe Excel business plans. These experts will come in and they'll say, and I was talking to my good friend, Paul Moffat about this the other day, somebody had presented to him for his practice. Well, Paul, when you get to this revenue number, you need to have this many people. He says, well, I'm already at four times that revenue number and I have half this many people. What, what do you mean? And so this, this point is at different spots for everybody. There is exactly to your point, Michael, there's a spot where 
just grinding it out won't get you to the next level. Now, again, that varies. Some people that's at 100K, some people that's at 5 million. But to say that there's this number where you have to hire somebody, we have to take on this major expense where you're probably not making any money. This, by the way, if you're doing 300 to 500 grand, you can't afford a junior advisor. You're, you're destroying what little profitability you had. Let's just go through that math real quick. All right, for one, and by the way, that, that point that you have that I'm just going to pull this out, what you just said, Please. there's a point that you... You need to hire someone else. Grinding it out won't get there. True, but that's in the multi-million dollars of yes. revenue with hundreds of clients, by the way. Yeah, and you'll um, never get there if you're not grinding first. I, I think this is where this illusion comes from. Like, correct. oh, I'll get to this next. No, no. If you don't grind, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. If you grind, you will get to a level at some point where you're going to need to pivot. That level's way above 300000 Yeah, so let's take 300000 right? Just on the low side because it makes my math easy. Let's assume a 50% profitability. Is that fair? You know, At 300,000, that might be tough, but let's call it 50% profitability. Sure. Okay, listen. So 150. Okay, so 150. Uh, so you're going to go hire a junior. Now, maybe we're just massively overpaying, but Jarvis, what's the cost for a junior or a co advisor? I mean, could you get somebody for 75? I mean, my experience is closer to 150 for someone that's got experience that you're not going to spend all your time training, but. Sure. Let's say it's 75, but then you got to put the burden on it. You got to put everything, all the other benefits on it. So you're closer to 100. Is you're, that a fair statement? You got to be at least 100. But for easy math, let's say 100. Okay. So 100. So you were at 300,000, 50% profitability is 150. Now you're giving 100 to a junior. That leaves you 50? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> let's say let's say you have 70% profitability. Okay. So you're at 210. And now you're going to be giving 100 out there. Now you're at 110. Right. Okay. So at what point are you and thinking then the market pulls back 20% and Ooh, now you're yeah. negative. Yeah. Like last year, by the, not hypo, night, hypothetically, <laughs> like last year, the market went down 20%. Right. And now that you're at this revenue set, but you still got to, it's funny when the market drops, my, my employees still expect their paychecks. It's still, really funny so that way. The IRS right? still wants to get paid. The rent is still due. Yeah. All, all of those things still happen. So again, we're kind of building these things. And, and when another advisor, I know we've ranted about this on other podcasts, when other advisors come and say, Hey, I'm at 250, 300, 500,000. I, the first thing I need to do is a junior. I can't grow. I'm like, no. Okay. You may have a system issue. You may have a For process sure. issue. For sure you you're not delivering value. Oh. Got to bring in that value sledgehammer, right? You got to be delivering value. So all of those things could be true. But Jarvis, I've never come across a case where hiring a junior was that silver bullet. And it's not a capacity issue. It is a pure lack of ability to work issue. Yeah, and we could line up advisors all day long. Now, now you could step back and say, well, look at this industry study. Look at that industry study. As we've ranted about before, the industry studies are all garbage. They, they don't pass even the lowest standard of statistical rigor. They're taken by people who are, A, are lying about their production because we see them lie about it. Or And two, it, it's people that don't have anything better to do with their time. When I talk to top producers, when we go to our mastermind, I say, hey, who's taking the investment news survey? None of them have. They all say, Jarvis, I was prospecting. There's no way I'm going to take an hour to fill out the investment news survey. And so, yes, the people who volunteer their time to fill out these surveys to get a $10 Starbucks card probably did hit a limit at 300000 So this is, you know, playing office, right, is, is, a, is a huge culprit inside of this. Uh, this is not having solid processes to, to go through. Uh, and we've talked about this before, but, you know, on a process, you need to start with where you stand. And so, you know what, I would say what's my biggest pain point that I have today yes. that sucks up my most time, that's the process that I would fix. If I'm not growing the way I want to go, then it'd be fixing my prospect process, right? And you should have that prospect process dialed in step to step to step. Now, recently, I've hired a coach to help us re evaluate our prospect process and and how can we do it? Now, this coach, very uh, kudos to him, Jarvis, is when he came in, he said, hey, look, I want to see your stats on this. And if you have a step that's working, I don't want to touch it. I want to look at the ones that you're dropping clients or dropping prospects. And those are the ones we need to focus on. Kudos to him. He didn't want to come in and redo everything. He says, no, if you have something that's working, then use it. But the key to this was have the stats. If I didn't have the numbers of where somebody was going through in the system, he would know where to start. He'd have to redo everything. And that could really kind of sink my ship, so to speak, because we have a good process. So you got to have a process, but you got to be able to track where things are in that process, whether it's an operations opening a new account. When do you, how long does it take to open a new account and to get money over? When you're doing trading, when you have a new client referral, when you have a prospect, right? What's your RMD process? All of these things you need to be able to track. And it seems overwhelming because it is. So start with one. Yeah, and I think for advisors who are listening to this and saying, hey, wait a second, I feel like I'm at a capacity wall, whatever the dollar amount is, maybe even to the point where you say you're embarrassed, like I, I'm at, I feel like I'm at a capacity wall and I'm at 300000 So let's dive a little bit deeper, Micah, and I think your point is valid, right? You need to go through and look at processes, and I would almost argue, and tell me this oversimplification, if you feel at your capacity wall, a combination of one of two things are happening. 
A, you're not prospecting enough, or B, you're playing office too much. I think it all boils yep. down to that. We, we can nuance that out. There's these systems, there's processes, there's how you're delivering value, how you're using your CRM, what technology you have in place. But I'd be willing to bet across the board. If you come to me and you say, Jarvis, I'm at a capacity limit, whatever the dollar amount is, you're playing office too much, you're not prospecting enough. You know, I, I was talking with an advisor the other day, and it was kind of the same thing as we have X amount of clients, we can't go above this limit. And I said, great, tell me about your day when you're in search. He's like, oh, my search is pretty intense. I was like, oh, fantastic. I love this. <laughs> um, and so he's doing two to three appointments a day. I was like, oh, it doesn't seem intense. Uh, but tell me more about your appointments. Well, his appointments are two plus hours. And I started having him walk me through what he's doing in his meetings, and he's going down rabbit holes left and right. I said, show me the value that you deliver in your client meetings. All he's going over is an investment performance statement. I was like, what in the heck are you possibly talking about for two and a half hours in a client meeting that all you have brought to the table is an investment policy statement or investment review? That's it. That, that is a two minute conversation at most. I can make it five minutes and we're done with the entire conversation. And so, but his role is just to be there for the client. And what really happened when I started peeling this onion back is he didn't have value to deliver to the client. So he was playing office and saying, well, I'm going to be here and I'm going to take a two hour meeting with a client to show the value that I have. So he was putting time in lieu of value. Time does not equal value, right? It's what are you doing with that time that equals value to the client? Am I giving them clear and unique information that they can do something about, right? If I'm talking about politics and saying, holy crap, this election's coming up, the market's going to be volatile. You know, I'm a little concerned what's happening with the dollar. And now we got, you know, Russia and China and, and India potentially collaborating and whatnot. What the hell's a client? supposed to do with that right that's not actionable if they're worried about that i want to dial that sucker down and says hey yeah those are really legitimate concerns jarvis while i'm talking with you and jackie i want to know what's important about you and what things we could do for the two of you to make sure you're protected regardless of what china india and russia do is that going to be okay yeah that's exactly right and this is where we can get confused between value and volume right and, and so and we, we tease about the value sledgehammer we even have our value sledgehammer sound effect but th there is never an issue of too much value. It's when we confuse, Mike, to your point, volume with value. I talked to an advisor the other day. He was sending, uh, like every month, he was sending clients personalized Loom videos. He was sending them a newsletter every single week. There was all this stuff going on. And I said, we'll call him Dave. I said, Dave, what you've created is the client now has to filter everything you send to decide if it's valuable or not. If the client's getting constant communication from you, they don't have time for all of that. And they're saying, well, is this important or that important? Is this one? I'm just going to assume I'm going to default that none of it's important. You've now become noise. That is not value. And of course, you'll hit a capacity wall. You're spending all your time pushing clients away. Now, you could make an argument uh, on a prospecting a content is different than client content, right? Yes. I, I can make this argument all day mm -hmm. long because that's what we do. On our PYFR, Plan Your Photo Retirement Channel, we have a lot of volume that comes in there. Now, I think it's valuable, but it's not like I would decide it as a client valuable, right? It's not unique and actionable for that particular client. It's about one particular thing. So if you're going to create a lot of content volume out there, as long as there's value inside of it, you can niche that in the prospecting side. And maybe this is just my justification. Fair enough. And I would put that in that shelf. But Jarvis, you're 100% correct. When I focus on the client, I need to be hyper clear. This is the reason I don't send out a monthly newsletter for the sake of sending out a monthly newsletter. There has to be value that's there to our clients. Now, when our clients get our newsletter, Jamie does a fantastic job writing them, they love reading them and they comment about it. It says, I would love to get more of these newsletters. It's fantastic. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to monthly. That probably no. means I have just the right quantity of them going out because they're looking forward to that next one that they get. Now, I want to pivot back around to the discussion that, that you mentioned with with your dad, telling this guy, "Hey, don't pump my head. My son's full of head, or my son's head full of head trash. A lot of head trash in that line." Uh, want to look at who you're spending your time with. I remember very clearly the first time that I was able to meet Tom Gao, who we, by the way, have a uh, training program that Tom Gao left us. Rest in peace, Tom. Uh, one of the things I learned, so I learned brilliant things from Tom, but being surrounded by advisors who had no capacity limit or had one that was, their capacity wall was so much further away and be able to meet these. And so instead of being in a room like you'd mentioned where the guy says, boy, 150 is the most you could ever make. I'm now in a room where guys are doing a million, two million, five million. And they're saying, hey, I'm only scratching the surface. It's so mm -hmm. important that you surround yourself with people. And I know this feels cliche, like you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. But if you spend your time around people who say, hey, I'm at capacity at 12 versus people that say, hey, I did three million last year and I feel like I'm just getting started, that's going to completely shift not just your mindset, but your, your experience and your practice.
Yeah, it's really going to shift those things. So I think they'd be really important to be looking at to say, how do we push this to the next level? What are things that you need to do that are actionable? And anytime, it, I guess this is the other thing that I, I sometimes see with uh, the advisors, not too often, but every now and again comes up, Jarvis, is the inability to want to work. Sometimes you just got to roll up your friggin' sleeves and work. Just get it done. Stop looking for hacks. Stop looking for all this other stuff. Just get your work done. That's a huge increase that we can have in our in our office and our productivity. That's one of the reasons I'll say I'm handsomely probably outwork almost any other advisor out there. It's a very bold statement, I know, because I am not willing. I, excuse me. I am very willing to roll up my sleeves and to just work and to just get things done with clients and doing it in a very limited amount of time. Again, going back to our egg time we talked about before, right? When you're going to deliver value to clients, say fantastic. Set ten minutes. Set 15 minutes on an egg timer and say, I'm only going to work on this for 15 minutes and I'm going to pivot to the next thing. Train yourself to get more value done in a quicker amount of time. Train yourself in how you run your meetings. There's a whole separate pod we need to do. But, you know, if you have a 60 minute meeting, it should be broken up into quarters, 15 minute segments uh, at least. And you should know what value you are hitting every quarter. Now, if you're like, holy crap, I've never thought about this. Now, you know, an action item that you need to start on. You need to know every 15 minutes, how are you delivering value to the client? And if you don't know that you're not doing your meetings as effectively as you can. Now, if you're thinking, Mikey, you're doing this wrong, there's a better way to do it, man, reach out. I would love this. This would be fantastic. I'm a student of the game. I would love to improve this, but everything we need to be doing need to be time focused and value focused with our clients. And if we're crushing that, it's called work by the way, but if we're crushing that, everything else falls into place. Yeah, a c- couple of thoughts there. One, and I've had several people point this out, that perhaps, Micah, you and I have done a disservice to the industry when we talk about how much time we take off and don't talk about how much work we do when we're in. And so there's a lot of people who have misunderstood that. And again, I'll take responsibility for that, thinking that, hey, you can kind of casually get yourself to a multi-million dollar practice, that you can sort of casually get yourself to a highly profitable, highly effective practice. You can't. You can't. You can grind like a maniac and earn that, right? You can grind like a maniac and get to these top levels of production. But I I meet advisors. You and I get to talk to hundreds of advisors, thousands of advisors, and you can pretty quickly tell the ones that are willing to grind it out and they'll get to the top and the ones that aren't willing to grind it out who will never get to the top. And there are a few people we've seen switch, flip the switch. A friend of ours, Mm -hmm. he, after decades of his career, decades, Decades. flipped that switch. I I couldn't believe how, I would never told him that at the time. I couldn't believe how much he flipped that switch. And he, what, has doubled, tripled his practice? Tripled, tripled. Yeah, yeah. But but to think that you're going to find this silver bullet, this magic thing. And so, Micah, you you mentioned, right? Like, hey, anybody else, please step up to the table. Like we're investing so much time and money into perfecting the game, even to this point. You and I just did a webinar where we talked about how much time and money just last year we invested. And it's it's a number that exceeds what Kitsa said was the capacity wall. We're investing more in (laughs) professional development than the, the capacity wall. That's why the capacity wall doesn't exist for us or it exists at some level that we've yet to find. But you've got to say, boy, do I want to spend this evening watching Netflix or am I going to study body language so I can master my eye contact during a meeting? Know when to look the client in the eye, know when to look at the spouse, know when to look away, know when to look at my paper. How do I want to spend my evening? Yeah, this is really, really important. What books do you read? What do you have on the shelf? What's your lineup, right? All of these things matter. Jarvis, at some time, we're going to have to do this analysis of these two advisors, and we won't name them. We'll just call them whoever. But uh, we have both at the same time period had access to exactly the same systems, exactly the same processes, right? The whole thing. So there's really, there's a little bit of geography difference, but that doesn't matter uh, between them. Short of that, they were at relatively the same level. And then one of them, as you just mentioned, decided to actually work. He decided to quit inventing systems. He decided to actually get to work uh, and implement the things versus recreating them. And now he has, again, tripled his business in this time period. This other advisor, he's this is the third version of his website he's coming out because he doesn't have his branding just right. And once he gets that, it's all going to be figured out. So he's going through another rebranding right now and like all these other things. And like his production is like flatlined to going down. And this other guy's like taken off. Same market, same condition, same, same technology stack in both offices. So there's no other excuse besides just working. Just follow the friggin' process, get your work done, deliver massive value to your clients. Yeah.
Yeah. Now, uh, lest, lest we sound like we're on too much of a pedestal here, right? There are several advisors out there that could come to us, and we've been working to try to get uh, time with them. Uh, there's people like Ken Moray that would come to us. There's people like Ken Fisher or Ron Carson that would say, geez, Jarvis and Micah, quit playing around. Rob Amateur Chatterton. Yeah. These guys would come and say, quit playing around on this podcast. Get the real work done and get to a 10x level. This speaks, Micah, to you and I that we are always on the search for who's at the next level. How do I get time with them? at almost whatever the cost. Amen. All right, so Jarvis, this podcast is all about action items. While I'd love to stay and rant here oh, for probably another to, hour, yeah. um, let's move on to some action items and, and things you need to do. So Jarvis, what's one thing our listeners could do this week that will improve their practice? Yeah, I'm gonna say that the number one thing to do this week is you've got to spend more time with people who are on the other side of whatever your mind tells you is the capacity wall, who can show you, hey, how do I deliver value? How do I take time out of the office? How do I charge top level fees? How do I solve these systems? And it's one part, like the little, like the literal A to B to C. The other is, hey, this guy or this gal is pretty much the same as me. Like they're not any better looking. They're not really any smarter. Um, they just have this capacity is not in their mind and they can show you the way to the next level. Crazy. I love it. You know, another action item I'm going to say to do it this week is know your numbers. Yes. Well, we didn't get to this. This was on our notes to talk about, but we just got on other things is you have to know your numbers. And that's what's going to prove the capacity wall doesn't exist. And Jarvis, we talked about this before. But when an advisor says I'm at capacity, I can't do these things. We got a real quick numbers check that we do with them right in person. And it blows their mind about saying where they really are. So not only know your numbers of your time, know your numbers on your profitability. I've been looking at several businesses lately and other advisors practice and whatnot. And I always write down a document what they tell me their average billing rate is. Then I get all of their files, right? And it's really like on their computer. And we do like a little zoom and we just, you know, kind of look at their math real quick. And again, one of the advisors I was talking about was just absolutely crushing it ahead of me. And what he said his average billing rate was, was not what his average billing yes. rate was. And it's, and, and I'm not trying to rag on them, right? But oh. know your numbers, quit drinking Kool-Aid and know what your actual numbers are. And this is going to help solve that capacity issue. Boy, I love it. I love it. But like this is a, another incredible episode, and it's uh, again I just kind of stress it. This was a pivotal moment in my career and in my life where whatever I thought was the capacity limit, somebody said, "No, no, no, it's still so far away. It's it's yeah. beyond the horizon. Whatever you thought it was, it's beyond the horizon." And being around those kind of people makes all the difference. I love it. And Jarvis, the last thing I'm going to say for oh, an please, action please. item because we kind of talked about it yeah. is. Know how to run your meetings. My meetings are 60 minutes. Every 15 minutes, I have a plan on how I'm going to deliver value. That's not a new value add every 15 minutes, by the way. That's not what I'm talking about, right? It is, I know how I'm going to deliver value to that client every 15 minute segment of that meeting. And if you don't know that, you need to figure this out. Now, if you're interested in this, we don't have a masterclass on it, but it's something I'm willing to put together if we have people that are interested. So you can go ahead and email on lifestyle at the perfect .com. Let us know if that's a class that you'd like to see. Um, and if you, again, have a better way of doing it, share. I'd love to have you on the podcast. I'd love to learn it. Love it. Well, Micah, thank you so much. This is always a lot of fun. It's definitely pushing what I thought were my capacity limits beyond the horizon. For all of our listeners, thank you for all your support. We're approaching 1.5 million downloads of the Jeez. podcast, which means my mom Amazing. is busy clicking on that download button <laughs> or, or something. Micah's got his kids downloaded like crazy. So, But, uh, Micah, thank you so much, my friend. And for all our listeners, until next time, happy planning. Happy planning. Information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today, don't think twice.